Yes, my name is Joseph Suki. I'm currently an incumbent uh, member of the House, 8th District. I'm from the 8th District, all the way from Kahakaloa to Waikapu. This past year, I've been part of leadership and, and, and the chairman of the uh, Transportation Committee. I have a title they've given me, and I don't quite know why. They call it Speaker Emeritus, I guess, for my term that I serve as Speaker of the House. And uh, as far as my goals for this coming year, the broad goals, of course, is to uh, see how we can increase the income stream coming into the state of Hawaii and look into all of the programs we have, which ones we can merge and make some adjustments within the particular program because uh, income is and money and funding going to be the thing again because a lot of the way we balanced the budget this past year was one time funding only and that's going to be over in one year. So we need to look as to how we're going to have the uh, continuum of uh, funding for our programs, for education, health, etc., so that we can maintain the quality of life for Hawaii. Now one of the um, contentious issues this past legislative session was the civil unions issue. What's your position and should same-sex couples be granted the same rights and privileges as legally married couples? I voted against civil union and historically I have been uh, pro-marriage for heterosexuals. Uh, I, I led the, the debate for the House against uh, same-sex marriage in 1998, I believe, when it came about, and where you find a head and uh, yeah, a constitutional amendment giving the legislature the right to determine whether we should have, we continue to have heterosexual marriage or to allow same-sex marriage. Now, it's not that I have anything against the gays. I, I believe they deserve the same uh, civil rights as anyone. And that is why back in 1998, we passed the re reciprocal beneficiary. And that is to provide civil laws that was uh, not allowed previously, both for the gays and for others. And I would want to look at that law again. And if we need to amend the law, and if I can use the term to make it more civil and to provide more rights for the, uh, for the citizens of the state of Hawaii, I would certainly look at that. Now, uh, I would want to uh, propose that, uh, that those that are in favor of the uh, of civil rights, uh, you know, do come and if I am elected to come and see me and I'm willing to sit down and talk to them. I have always been in favor of uh, civil rights for all of the citizens of the state of Hawaii. Being involved with the transportation um, sector, uh, the widening and realignment of the Honoa Pi'ilani Highway has been discussed for years, yet only a small portion is currently under construction. How long will it really take and what alternatives do you envision to alleviate traffic right now. Yes, that is a problem. And uh, this past two years I've been trying to pass a legislation uh, called the Highway Modernization Fund. And that's a four billion dollar funding to provide highway uh, improvements, uh, improvements both for highways, roads, dams, uh, levees, and the whole thing. But if we uh, if we can pass this, the last time the, uh, the Senate approved it, uh, it was a House bill that the Senate approved. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the votes in the House in the end because that would require a, an increase in gasoline tax. And a number of the members who, uh, was not in favor of that, of course, in an election year. And, but I believe we have no alternative for the state of Hawaii uh, than to look at this highway modernization again. It's a $4 billion program. It could take care of the Lahaina problem that we have in Honopi'ilani and also the problem of going from, uh, from Kahalui all the way to, uh, to Paia and on, because there is terrible also. We need to look at that also. So Maui is behind on highways, even though I must say I'm very happy with the ones that we built recently at, at 
Halekla Highway, and Ikihei, and of course we find it working on the uh, by bypass in Lahaina, and with some improvement. There's some work on on in Lahaina now, but this highway modernization would resolve the problem, and hopefully we'll have the the spirit with of the legislature uh, to pass the bill this coming session. The State Commission on Water Resources recently issued rulings on streams in East Maui and as well as Navai Eha in the West Maui Mountains. Are the new in-stream flow standards sufficient or will they ultimately hurt the struggling sugar industry? I believe they will hurt the sugar industry. Uh, it was a compromise position and I think the sugar industry looked upon that they probably have no choice but to accept the compromise, uh, looking at the mood of the uh, of the DLNR at that particular time. There's a lot of water that's going into the ocean now, and I think we got to kind of relook at that again. I know there's feeling among many people that we need uh, the excess water going into the ocean because it will uh, increase the ecosystem within that water and provide for uh, a better fishing uh, situation where you get a uh, different kind of fish that thrives in this uh, uh, salt and freshwater mixture. I believe the ultimate solution is to uh, build uh, more reservoirs. We need to invest in more reservoirs. Uh, I think our aquifers is running dry we, and so we need to uh, look at aqua and additional um, uh, reservoir in the uh, Waikamo area. And we need to look in Hana where we can uh, uh, capture some of the water because it rains almost every night over there. But uh, it, it's got to make some tough calls because uh, if we don't do anything as far as increasing the water capacity, we will not have enough uh, water for housing. And also if we want to have keep the sugar plantation going, that's 800 employees and you put the multiplier effect on that, so you're going to have them shutting down. They're, they're losing money right now. And it's only in a way to the generosity of AMB that they, they can continue at this point because nobody wants to run a business where you're going to lose money. And what's going to happen to all that land? you got over 50,000 acres. It's going to turn into a desert. I don't think we want that. There's no crop presently that can take the place of sugar. On the topic of education, what do you plan to do to prevent a repeat of the Fertile Friday situation? Again, it all goes back to money. If we don't have an increase in revenue, and uh, in this past year, uh, I mean the past months, we've had the uh, Council of Revenues come in with some positive signs. And if we continue to have this revenue increases, and then we can look at uh, not having furlough Friday to continue. But we got to remember, as I mentioned previously when we began, a lot of the funding that we had that we did to balance the budget was one-time funding. So unless we have a corresponding increase in revenue someplace else, you're going to have to uh, continue to have furloughs. But they, or, you know, the, uh, the unthinkables, which making cuts, which we've made only. A lot of cuts already, remember, less year we had to make a $1.2 billion adjustment in the budget and the year before also. So there's a lot of adjustments we made. So if right now you find a lot of the programs are running at uh, one half speed or three quarter speed. They're not running at the full capacity. And so I cannot tell you that things is going to be hunky dory. We need to make the tough choices. Tough choices may be more cuts or looking at some revenue enhancements. Any closing thoughts? This is your chance to tell the constituents a little bit about your campaign and where to contact you. Right now we're campaigning very hard. I have some very tough competition. And I have a Facebook. <laughs> you can call me. You can write me in Facebook. In fact, in, in Facebook I have all my, uh, my priorities for the, that, for the year. It's all in there. I don't have any campaign headquarters, but uh, Feel free to call me anytime. We look forward to hearing from you.